Let's make a top ten list, baby. While trying to find new lyric-centric music to listen to, I, I was just in shock that a lot of the search results are mainstream and popular music. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. Mainstream and lyricism is like letting R. Kelly live by a high school. It's like just freaking putting mustard on cheese or something. It's, it doesn't make sense. Okay, well, it, it kind of makes sense because the way the internet works and SEO and all that good stuff, but it, it's not correct. So I just wanted to whip up a list of some of my personal favorite lyric-centric songs, some of the songs that I consider the deepest songs, and hope that if someone out there is looking for actual deep content, they can find this video and get some good music, get a few banger recommendations. So without further ado, number 10, we used to vacation the Cold War Kids. I promise to my wife and children I'd never touch another drink as long as I live But even then, it sounds so soothing To mix a gin and sink into so this song's an emotional take on a man coping with and, and repenting for some of his miscarriages towards his family in the past. You know, I don't know enough about Cold War Kids or the man behind these lyrics um, to say whether he experienced it personally. However, he, the song just has like a very strong emotional base that made me feel like I could relate to it even though I can't at all, <laughs> you know? Like... I don't have a drinking problem or, you know, have a family to neglect. So, um, I can't relate to it all, yet I could. And, and that, to me, is a great lyricism. This song only came in at number 10 because it's kind of straightforward. In lyrics, I tend to like a little bit of room for thought, but a very straightforward, very emotional, very clear on what he's trying to say. Great job. Number nine, The Unthinking Majority by Serge Tongshin. Tankian? Tankian? Sorry if I said your name. The lead singer of System of a Down. It's his solo stuff. The Unthinking Majority. Outside of this song just being an absolute headbanger of a song, the lyrics are super fascinating to me. Obviously, you have the antidepressant. If you've heard the song, the antidepressants line that just really pops out. It just sounds so cool. Controlling tools of your system, making life more tolerable, making life more tolerable. What I personally like most about the line is it's kind of taking all of these problems of the world, taking the, the question of whether capitalism is a fair democracy. It takes all of that. And rather than pointing the finger at the wealthy people who are lobbying and using money to you know, work towards certain goals, it almost kind of blames it on the people who are supporters of those, despite it being not in their best interests. Um, which I, I just think is very interesting. You know, it, it is an interesting concept. America is a democracy. We could vote for something different, but people vote out of self-interest. And, and I just really like how this song kind of plays on that. Number eight, a journalist falls in love with a death row inmate by Margaret and the nuclear so-and-sos. Holy crap, stop naming things. The lyrics tell a story, a mildly dark tale, from a woman's perspective who is in love with a literal serial killer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, literally. He's, he's literally, in the song, he is a murderer. So, I, yeah, I'll admit that part of the reason it's on this list is I'm just a sucker for dark lyricism. And like that whole true crime world is appealing to me. 
what I personally like about the song or how I interpret it or, or what I'm drawn to is the woman's very sweet nature of describing this serial killer. Down over there, all the girls were jealous Cause he liked me the best You know, she's so warm and affectionate towards him it kind of makes like the whole song seem more like a metaphor that is far more relatable for um for someone listening than like the actual serial killer situation. But yeah, it kind of makes it seem like it's this metaphor where the protagonist, possibly the singer of the band, is a lady killer. Um, you know, ultimately, the the song manages to tell a unique and creative story while feeling slightly relatable at the same time, it, it's a good song. It definitely has a whole different feel than the unthinking joke. Number seven, the man, the myth, the legend, get out of the car, Aesop Rock, who I consider the best rapper of all time. Kid, everything that he touched turns promptly to shit. If I zoom on out, I can finally admit, it's all been a blur since Moo got sick. None of the subsequent years stood a chance when the was mine. I'm gonna go over some of these lyrics, but I'd also like to just point out that a lot of these artists, they could have a lot of songs on this list. Aesop Rock is one of them. And for some of those artists, I just kind of chose an arbitrary song. To be honest, there might be Aesop Rock songs with way deeper lyrics. So in this track, Aesop kind of dissects the feeling that comes from losing a loved one kind of breaks it down and then takes it to a few different uh, analytical places, both in how he's feeling internally um, and kind of even breaking out of the main concept. He has some great one-liners in it. Super, super cool song. His mastery of alliteration, assonance, and literary technique. He's got to be on the list, period. Number six, man. I, I gave this spot to one who I regard as one of the greatest poets ever. Custom Concern by Modest Mouse. I get up just about now. My head sends a message for me to reach for my shoes and then walk. Gotta go to work, gotta go to work, gotta have a job. So Though one could interpret these lyrics as super depressing, and I mean, I'll be the first to admit they are, the song addresses a fear that's genuine amongst millennials in younger ages. The fear of living a life that they saw their parents live, working at the same company day after day forever until you want to retire and just, it's just never ending. It's a never ending process to watch. What's so cool about this song to me is it was released in 1996. Yet, its messages hold more true today than they even did back then. If a song can age like wine, then that is a good song. It's, it's written beautifully. Hey there, post-editing Nick here. Thank you so much for watching up to this point. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Please check out my music. It's lyric-centric. I like to think it's on par with the stuff on this list. You can be the judge of that. Anyways, here's a small clip of it. Thank you so much for listening. The economy is full of hypocrisy. Well, Lord, that we probably be too rid of the GDP instead. We should probably be in this. Staying in happy beings, he says. In the eyes of all, not numbers in a bank safe, eight meters tall. Alright, number five, halfway through, hindsight built to spill. Hindsight's given me too much memory. It's too much never seen. It's always there. It's everywhere. Hindsight has given me too much memory. There's too much never seen. So you're looking back, you're kind of reflecting on your memories, thinking of what you could have done differently. There's a lot, in fact, th there's too much you could have done different. But it's always there, it's everywhere. 
And now he kind of lives and, and reflects on his hindsight, takes it even further. And like, he's almost, it's almost like a paranoid lyric in a way. That to me is something that's very relatable. Um, and I'm sure a lot of other people feel that way as well. There's like a level of paranoia that comes with analyzing the consequences of every action you try and take. <laughs> yeah, and, and this song just has some freaking great one-liners. Alright, number four goes to Helplessness Blues by the Fleet Foxes. And now after some thinking, I'd say I'd rather be a functioning cog in some great machinery serving something beyond me. So let's break it down for a second. I was raised up believing I was somehow unique. Like a snowflake distinct among snowflakes, unique in each way you can see. Now, after some thinking, I'd say that I'd rather be a functioning cog in some great machinery serving something beyond me. So, whew, cool. Talk about a summation of the human experience. I mean, everyone wants to be unique, especially now. Um, and, and kind of coming to the realization that you need to play the game to be the game. So with this particular song, it has one of my favorite song endings of all time, um, except for the ending of Mid Lake. Some of them were superstitious. It is not on the list, but if you want a pretty ending, that song is the song. Mid Lake, some of them were superstitious. Anyways, this song ending is so beautiful. Lyrically, I like to separate the two. Almost, even though it's probably not how it was written. I like to do that because the second half of the song, the lyrics are just so... I mean, the music is so romantic. It's so just beautiful. It's very pretty, is a good way to put it. And because of that, I like go to this place of romance for analysis. And the lyrics that go with the second half of the song come off as romance. So I kind of think of them as two little different songs thrown together as one. Both great. Check it out. If you haven't heard this song, check it out. Number three. We are almost done. Down to the big three. Swing Low Magellan. By Dirty Projectors. Last night, all oh, my attention squinting westward at the sunset with a map and a compass. The song begins laying out the foundation of the song. The protagonist is an explorer in Magellan's crew who is sailing to the New World. They finally receive land and they get very excited. Those are the opening lyrics of the song. But they said, ah, just the way that those, the way that that sequence is said is just so beautiful. Against the sky, a point of light. Too invisible to give itself to the naked eye. There against the sky, a point of light, too invisible to give itself to the naked eye. On the shore, people yelling, in their eyes a great reflection. <laughs> the thing about all of these songs is I'm giving you like generalized ideas of what I think the lyrics mean, but a lot of these songs, you could break it down word by word. I mean, in their eyes a great reflection, I can make a whole video about what that is referring to in the song. 
And that's like four words. So these, these songs are just so great. And you really got to check them out. And then at the end of the song, to tie everything together, they just talk about the destruction they cause. Um, and, and the doubt and shame that would eventually come of that action. So I think it really took the whole experience of developing America full circle in a way that was engaging, had like great, great diction and just hidden meanings throughout the whole song. Very cool song. Number two is the number one song, Man of Oil, Animal Collective. This one is probably one of the more tough ones to digest that we've come to this point. To make it simpler, I'll kind of start with the chorus where you learn the subject of the song, and then we'll read through the other lyrics knowing the subject. So here's the chorus. Wizard with a wand, competing with the lightning. Coward and also a king, and a man of oil. One could say that it's fairly interpretive lyric, but to me, it seems that he's just simply referring to executives in the oil industry. The reason I interpret it that way is because, oh my golly gee, Willikers, oh snap. That makes the first two lines such a gorgeous lyric, with that being the interpretation. Wizard with a wand competing with the lightning. Not only does it kind of reference the immense power of the wealth in that industry, that industry that created industrialism, really. I mean, without oil, we wouldn't be anywhere where we are today. It started it all. Um, but the line competing with lightning. Oh, because what is oil? Oil is energy. Oil is man's version of lightning. Just to think of a business as competing with the earth. Wow. I've listened to this song so many times and I still just have so much fun thinking about it. <laughs> I want to sweat in the night. Strange sensation to feel alive. I find it so hard to tell you I'm afraid to fall. It's about a worker who is talking about the man of oil. So, I woke to sweats in the night, strange sensation to feel alive. I find it so hard to tell you that I'm afraid to forget the smell of you. We finally done it, folks. We finally gotten down to number one. Talking about a pretty sunset by Modest Mouse. Talking shit about a pretty sunset Blanket and opinions that I'll probably regret soon Changed my mind so much I can't even trust it My mind changed me so much I can't even trust myself Don't get mad at me for putting Modest Mouse twice on here. They're the only band I did that for, but I'm such an Isaac Brock lyrics fan that I could have made a list where they had all 10 spots. Yeah, I think he's that good. Anyways, let's, let's go over the lyrics. Let's even skip past the first two lines for time's sake, even though it's super cool. I mean, talking shit about a pretty sunset, contradiction, and kind of an oxymoron, just cool imagery, um, blanketing opinions that I'll probably regret soon. You know, very insightful, very internal. You can digest it and think about it a lot. We're gonna skip all that, screw that. What we want is my favorite two lines of any song of all time. I've changed my mind so much I can't even trust it. My mind changed me so much I can't even trust itself. Philosophically, I've thought about this line more than any other lyric. See, the first line, it's so relatable and it, and it really, everyone experiences that. Everyone experiences both of these lines, but everyone's conscious that they're experiencing changing their mind about to take the wordplay, such clever wordplay, only switching around the words mind and myself as the subject and object of the sentence. And you are taking something that's super relatable 
you're turning into something that's also relatable, but relatable in a way that most people don't realize, right? Because your mind is constantly changing. The amount of control we have over our thoughts is not as great as what most people think it is. Isaac Brock in this lyric, he's kind of playing on that back and forth of like, change my mind, but my mind was the reason I did it. So, you know, and it kind of creates this philosophical loop that basically is just saying that we don't have much control. And I think that is freaking deep as crap, dog. Determinism. There you have it, folks. Those are 10 of the deepest songs that came to my mind. You know, just remember this is a list of personal taste. You know, sorry if I offended anyone who thinks Ed Sheeran is deep. Sorry. I mean, I disagree still, but, and, we, and we probably can't be friends. But, you know, I don't mean to offend people when I make this content. Um, I hope you guys found a few new songs from this list. And please stay tuned. I have more music coming your way, more videos coming your way. I know I've been a little bit slow, but my professional life has been super busy. Kind of just balancing that act. I'll talk to you guys soon.